Let's poke around Firebase some more and see if we can get a better idea for just what the heck this thing is. So close your getting started stuff if you already got your config in there. Let's look at the database item in the menu. Nice blue warning, or notice, I suppose. Default security rules require users to be authenticated. Well, we don't have users yet, right? And we're not ready to add authentication to our app. So we probably need to change those rules or nobody's going to be able to read or write anything. Hey, it's a rules tab. Okay, there's this weird JSON-y looking thing. Read, auth not equal null, write, auth not equal null. How about we just change those to true and true. Unpublished changes. Looks like we need to hit publish for this to actually take effect. Now there's a big fat red warning. Your security rules are defined as public. Anyone can read or write to your database. Probably not something we want to keep in there permanently, but we did it on purpose. We'll leave it for now. I'll dismiss this message. So now anyone can read or write our database. So you do flip public stuff. Yep. Flip back to the data tab. What do we have here? So the Firebase database is um, a NoSQL database or NoSQL database. Anybody ever used one before, like MongoDB? What have you used? Uh, okay, so those are not NoSQL databases. Those are SQL databases, right? Yeah, those are relational databases. So the difference being we don't have tables, we don't have relations between those things. We have this big structure that looks like JSON. It's basically a document database instead of a table-based database. So it just looks like JSON. It's really easy to deal with. You know, it's better at some things and worse at other things rel relative to a relational database. But they're hip, and that's what Firebase is. And it works really well for what we're trying to do. So there's nothing in there right now. Let's see if we can add some data. If I hover over this rascal, I get this plus and X business. I'm going to hit plus. And I'm going to add a key here. This is really just keys and values. Name, notes. And I could type in a string value, but I want this to be, I want stuff nested underneath here. So I will hit the plus, and I'll nest something underneath there. So I'll make up an ID for a note, like blah dee blah And the value again, I want to nest something underneath that with a title from Firebase. And I'll hit the plus again up here, body. Really? Oh, yeah. And this thing I typed in here, that should be the ID, right? ID, value, that. And I'll click Add at the bottom. It and won't I. Me, it won't let me put from Firebase. There's a red line under Firebase. Oh, yeah. Look. You did it under the value as opposed to the name. So you see the tree-like structure. So if we're accessing these things by a URL, each of these things would be called an endpoint if we access it through the Firebase API. By the way, Firebase has fantastic documentation. Click go to docs anytime. So. We want to use Rebase to sync our data with this. And here's the part that sounded really neat. Sync state to a data binding. Let's see. Allows you to set up two-way data binding between your component state and your Firebase. Die in Firebase, die in real life. I mean, um, whenever your component state changes, Firebase will change. Sync state. 
So I've exported this, the result of React, or excuse me, rebase.create class. So I want to import that in app.js. So flip on over to app.js. Add an import at the top. Import. I'm just going to call it lower lowercase b base from dot slash base dot js. And I want to call base dot sync state. If I scroll down a bit, I bet there's an example. There sure is. Component did mount base dot sync state. Component did mount. Did it? I didn't see it. What the heck does that mean? This is a lifecycle method. So this is only available to components that are actually classes. By inheriting from React component, not only do we get things like this.state, we also get some lifecycle methods. Here's the page on uh, React's documentation where they talk about React components. Here, I'll paste this in. The component lifecycle. Each component has several lifecycle methods that you can override to run code at particular times in the process. So the methods are there on the superclass, but we can override them, and then our code will be run at that time. Methods prefixed with will are called right before something happens, and methods prefixed with did are called right after something happens. For example, mounting. These methods are called when an instance of a component is being created and inserted into the DOM. So a component will mount runs right before it gets added to the DOM. Component did mount right afterwards. In other words, first the constructor runs, then component will mount, then render, which actually sticks it on the page, and then component did mount. And there are a few others too. For updating, whenever your props and state change. Unmounting, when it's removed from the DOM. So we can just stick one of these in there and it'll work. And the example on rebase calls base.sync state inside component did mount. So we'll do that too. So the lifecycle methods, um, I'm going to put right after the constructor. Things that I'm overriding from the super class I don't want to hide. So after the constructor, I will make component did mount. You can use a property initializer. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be it called automatically. But for consistency's sake, we can. And in there, I want to call base.sync state. Base, we imported from base.js, right? And we know that that is our rebase instance. So how do we use sync state? Back to the docs. Sync state has two arguments. First, the endpoint, which is a string, the relative Firebase endpoint to which you'd like to bind your component's state. So where in our Firebase database do we want to sync it with? Uh, the notes right here. So that's all it means, the string notes. That's the endpoint in Firebase that I want to sync with. So that's the first argument, the string notes. Next, the second argument, options, which is an object. Looks like the first two are required. First context, then state, so I need to pass in an ar uh, object with context colon something and state colon something. Context. The context of your component. What it means is, 
It's going to sync this with state. So what object is that state on? This. In the example down here, it's this. Yeah. And that's exactly right. So context, this. State, also a string, the state property you want to sync with Firebase. So we have this.state.notes and this.state.current note. We don't really need to sync current note with the database. That's just you know something about the state within it running in the browser. Our data is all on this.state.notes. So which property on state do we want to sync? Notes, the string notes. We tell it what object that state is on, and we tell it which property within state we want to sync. We tell it what part of Firebase we want to sync it with. Yeah, Kenny. You could call sync state more than once. All right. So it seems to me, holy smokes. From Firebase, really? Cuss, yeah, really? No, I wasn't really getting ready to say something. I just wanted to interrupt myself with surprise when I saw this show up. It just, we typed it up in Firebase and it just showed up. Didn't even refresh the page. See, I typed it right in, hey, whip. What's this? Holy smokes. We typed it down there. This is madness. It can't be that easy. Oops. Cuss, yeah. Ah. Uncle Cussa. Uncle Cussa. That's right. Really? Lots of question marks. Look at that. Look at that. Look how fast that happens. Milliseconds, Bubba. Real time database. Welcome to the future, suckas. Population Firebase. And you. Pretty nice. Pretend nice. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Frank frankly. Um, depends on probably the kinds of operations you're doing, but I mean, this thing is used in production by stuff. Yeah. This is true. What if I refresh the page? They're back. That's right. Life is good. What about deleting? Bullet. Oh, not deleted. Cleared out the form. What I, I just said sync state. I, and I changed state. What gives? So here's what's happening. When we run remove current note, we completely delete that key from state, right? Well, when I added one directly in Firebase, it showed up locally, right? So we remove that key from state. Firebase syncs and it says, oh, oh, you don't have this note? Here, let me help you out. So it just puts it right back. So now what we do, Alex, is set it to null. 
notes, square bracket, blah, 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 equals null. So we need that key to be in there and its value to be null. Then when I sync with Firebase, it'll say, oh, okay, so this is getting deleted. And it'll delete it and it'll sync and it'll be fine. We couldn't have done it this way from the beginning. It doesn't work. But when you're syncing with Firebase, this works and is how you must do it. That's right. So now, deleted. It's gone. Now, current note isn't here, right? And if I added another key underneath notes, other stuff, pancakes. That's, that's not here. If I look at my React Dev Tools at app, that's not in the state somewhere. Right? So it's only syncing that one endpoint in Firebase with that one property in state. But it does that almost magically. Life is good. So sync state again. This is the endpoint on Firebase. This is bleh, what object the state is on and which property to sync. I did for your benefit. It pains me. Because look, that tells me my arguments here. Yeah, anyway, it's fine. Look what you made me do. You made me add a comment. Oh, gosh. Sync notes with Firebase. Pretty dang nice. <laughs> 